Now, here's what a package is. It's usually a box with screen on it. It varies somewhat from place to place and, and company to company. Um, it usually has a can of syrup that they've been feeding the bees with. It usually has a queen cage in here and the queen cage can vary. In the United States, typically I see one of three kinds of queen cages. I, I know what this one's gonna be by the, by the plastic, plastic I see here. This will be an um, a, AZBZ, I'm pretty sure, or JZBZ. Um, it, it'll be a plastic cage with a queen in it and some, maybe some attendance, maybe not. Um, if you get a package like from Georgia in the Southern United States, it usually has a, a Benton three hole cage, which is made out of wood. It's, a, it's kind of big, has candy on one end. It's too fat to fit in all your frames if you put it between the frames. Um, this one will fit between the frames, that one won't. Um, if you get them from California, they're usually a little, a much smaller wooden cage that has no candy and only has a cork in one end. The, the Benton three hole has a cork in both ends. One end has candy, one end doesn't. Um, now we're gonna come to some of what would vary depending on where you are. Because where you are has a lot to do with what you would do. When I get packages in the spring, it's somewhere between early April and late April in, in my part of the world and it could freeze at night. And so I don't dare leave the queen on the bottom because the bees may all cluster up here and the queen will get stuck down here and she may die because it'll be zero degrees centigrade, 32 degrees Celsius, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit possibly that night and then she'll just, you know, she'll just freeze to death. So um, I don't dare do that. But I also don't dare hang her in between the frames because I'm doing foundationless and if I hang her between the frames, they almost always build that first comb hanging off of that cage and if they build one bad comb that leads to another bad comb and another bad comb and I don't want that so I usually direct release her I just let her go now that works better when you just you're just doing one hive in your backyard but if you got five or six it gets more and more likely that they'll move next door because they like that queen better you get you, you have other complicated issues but since we're in Australia and since I'm pretty sure it's not gonna freeze tonight um, I'm pretty sure it's not even gonna get close uh, we'll, we'll put the queen probably on the bottom with the candy open so that the bees can chew the candy out of the, out of the cage to release the queen. And that way they'll be stuck here for a couple of days. They'll start building some comb, they'll get settled in, and then by the time she gets out, they're, they're much more likely to stay. Um, I wouldn't do that where I am just because the, the likelihood of them leaving isn't really that much more when I direct release her. But, um, it is real likely they'll mess up the comb if I hang the cage, and I have to hang the cage to have her up in the cluster. Otherwise, she, she, if I put her down on the bottom, she may not survive. Does that make sense? So that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put the cage on the bottom and, um, and assume that the, since it's nice and warm, the bees will go down there and take care of her. She'll be fine. They wouldn't all cluster up there where I am and not take care of her except for the cold. They cluster like that because of the cold. They don't have a lot of choice. They don't want to get too cold. So um, I'm going to get the queen out first so that we have something and we can work with her and decide what we want to do with her. This is the can. You may need a pair of pliers or a, or a hive tool or something to get the rim up where you can get a hold of it. Sometimes they're wedged in there kind of tight. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes there's comb hanging from it. All those are possibilities. It looks like this one, he's, they've got a hole in it. For the, and screen wire in there for the bees to come in the side. The ones in the U.S. usually have holes in the bottom or they have, uh, sometimes they have a, a, a round hole punch with a rubber grommet and a piece of cloth in that so that they're eating it from the bottom. This one you can see they're coming out of this, so they've been coming in the side here crawling down into the can. So this is a different system than I'm used to seeing, but it's the same concept. It's a can full of syrup for them to live on. I'm not sure how they built the ladder to get down in there. Now that I take this out, of course, the bees are coming out. I'm not really trying to let them out just yet. I'm not trying not to let them out just yet. I'm just trying to get the queen. Not having much luck getting in there. It's hard to get a hold of. Okay, here's my queen. I'll just set this can back in here. Okay, this is the queen cage. This, this kind of a queen cage 
I'm, I'm gently trying not to squish any bees here. This kind of a queen cage has this, this plastic cap on it. So the candy, if there is some, will be behind that cap. And it looks like there is some. So I'm going to take this cap off. And you should be able to see that there's candy in there. So there's, there's a number of theories on what to do here. It really isn't that critical one way or another. You could poke a hole in the candy. What that will accomplish is they'll, they'll chew through it quicker. I, I don't mind if it takes them a couple of days. If you come back in three or four days and they haven't chewed through it, just let her go. But um, meanwhile, we'll keep them here and they'll start building some comb and they'll get a little more established that this is home. Um, if, I, if I have her confined, they can't really leave very easily. They could move next door to another queen, but, they, but other than that, they're not going to abscond without a queen. So they're not going to fly off and leave. So I'm going to just set this on the bottom. Uh, um, there's no attendance in here, but there's plenty of bees trying to take care of her, and they'll, they'll do fine taking care of her. So I'm going to set it on the bottom board in here. Now, I wouldn't do that in Nebraska in April. But I do that here now. Does that make sense? Okay, so I got a box full of bees here. Now we're really gonna open Pandora's box. Um, there's a number of ways I could do this. I could just take the can out and dump them through the hole. And that doesn't work too bad. If you want to reuse the cage, that's what I do. If you don't really care about reusing the cage, you can just cut the screen loose and peel it open and then dump the bees out. And that works fine. If you don't care about ever reusing it, that's probably the simplest. If you, if you want to save this later to put some bees in, then, then I would just shake them out. It's not that hard. It's, if you do shake them out, basically you just turn it upside down, hit it good to knock them loose, and then just pour them out like you're, like, like you're pouring anything out of a jug or whatever that's not quite liquid, you know? You shake it a little to get it to pour out, knock them loose again, shake it to pour them out. Kind of like pouring pancake batter, but... Um, but since we're probably not going to reuse this, I'll just cut the screen. Does that sound like a plan? So I'll pull this can out just to get it out of the way so we're not jostling bees around and drowning them. Now, now I'll reiterate what I already did. I took some frames out here, so I've got some room, right? So I've only got four frames in here, and I've got an empty space in the middle. Oh, I got a knife. So I'm just going to cut this screen open. And I, I don't want them all getting out here. I want them really to go in there. So I'm probably going to move this over here about now. This is not the way I usually do it because I usually save the boxes. It's an odd sized box. I'm used to shorter boxes, so I'm not sure what I think about this, but. There's, there's two reasons. There's one, one main reason to get a little bit more uh, violent, I guess is the word, I don't know. A little less uh, gentle with bees, and that's when you're trying to get them off of something is the number one reason. Now they've built some comb in here it's so soft, though, I don't think it's worth me trying to do anything with it. So I'm just going to shake them off and put it out here. Um, if you want to get bees off of something, gentle is not the way to do it. But almost all the rest of the time when you're doing bees, you want to be gentle. When you want to get bees off of something, it really works better just to do it, surprise them. You know, hit it sudden and hard. So I'm going to knock them out of this box. Okay. Now there's still some bees in here. I'm not gonna worry about them. I'm just gonna set it out here in front because the queen's not in there. The queen's in here and most of the bees are in here. So they'll, they'll just move in here. So I'll put the rest of the frames in. And of course, you know, you wanna always be gentle. You're, you're gonna, if you're gonna keep bees, you're probably gonna squish some once in a while, but the object of the game is to not squish them. So set things down gently and at least the smart ones can get out of the way and the dumb ones I can't do much for. <laughs> but the smart ones, they'll move over. Okay, the next thing is 
you'll probably find somebody who disagrees with me because I've found some, I found people that will disagree with me, but you want to put these frames tightly in the middle. In reality, all the standard frames are actually an eighth of an inch too wide. If I could, I'd put them an eighth of an inch closer together, and I can't. So I want them as tight as I can get them because that's closer to the natural spacing of brood. If I space them too wide, they may decide to build some comb out in the middle because they don't like that you spaced them too wide. You know, you got them spaced at an inch in, at, at 38 millimeters when it ought to be 32, really, and these are 35. The wider I space that, the more likely they'll decide to build some wild comb that's not on the frame. So I want them tight in the middle. So the excess space is on the outsides, and when I need to work it, that means I can move one over a little bit to, to get them out. Does that make sense? So now that I got them in here, I'll put the lid on. Um, we wouldn't have a brush, would we? Yeah, thanks. Um, you, you really don't have to buy a bee brush. A good feather from a turkey or a, any big bird works really well, but a brush works fine too. Um, but if you've got big birds around, you'd, I think the feather actually works better. But I'm gonna brush these off the edge because I don't wanna squish them. Now when you're trying to move bees, you're better to kind of flick them a little bit than you are to, to go gently because when you go gently, you just kind of push them and squish them and they hang on tighter and then they just get mad. So you're better off to do little flicks like this than you are to do this. Does that make sense? So we're going to put that little brick on. Would you now, in, in, if there's a flow on, which I think there is here, I wouldn't bother to feed them. I just let them forage. Um, it's what they naturally do, and they do it pretty well. I don't see much point, but you could. In April, and in, in where I live, there may not be anything blooming, and I may have to feed them. And if I have to, I feed them, but. But if there's something blooming, I usually don't. Does that make sense? And there we are. To keep up to date with all the latest episodes, please subscribe to the Flow Hive YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, pop them in the box below and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can.